The she-wolf got caught in a trap, and nearby her puppies were hiding. The forester decided to help the animals. Ordinary people usually rarely venture deep into the forest, but the hero of today's story was an experienced forester with previous military experience in Canadian reconnaissance. One morning, John was working in the forest, taking tree measurements. Suddenly, he stopped, hearing a piercing howl nearby. He dropped his equipment and tools he had brought for tree measurement and slowly walked towards the sound. After a while, the man emerged into a forest clearing, where he encountered a large she-wolf. Her paw was caught in a trap, and she was desperately trying to free herself, but she grew tired and lay down on the ground. The she-wolf looked exhausted, as if she had been fighting for her freedom for a long time. John wanted to help the animal, but when he approached closer, the she-wolf growled her fur standing on end, but it was more out of fear than genuine malice. The predator jerked her paw sharply, hoping to free herself and escape, but her strength was fading. John stepped back, not wanting to cause harm to the wild animal. That's when he noticed something unexpected. The she-wolf's udder was full. This meant that her pups must be somewhere, eagerly waiting for their mother, if they were still alive. And indeed, it turned out to be true. A little wolf cub peeked out from the bushes nearby, and most likely, the little one was not alone. John wanted to save the wolf pups, and he needed to act quickly. But he couldn't approach the she-wolf, fearing that she might harm him and herself. The she-wolf was on the brink of death. It seemed she had lost a lot of blood from the wound on her paw, and if left alone, death would be inevitable within a day or two. Moreover, poachers or other predators could come for their prey. John understood this and didn't want such an outcome. He had experienced many things in his life and wasn't about to give up easily. He knew that every second he spent could change someone's life. Action needed to be taken right now. John gathered his courage, crouched down, and slowly approached the she-wolf. He cautiously touched her paw. To his surprise, she didn't react. She was already completely exhausted. It's now or never. He carefully shielded himself from the she-wolf with one hand, wrapped in his jacket for protection in case of aggression and with the other hand, he pressed the trap mechanism to free her, but it didn't release, her paw remained trapped. Perhaps the trap had jammed due to the powerful jerks when the animal tried to escape. John didn't have time to think. With both hands, he exerted pressure on the trap, disregarding safety rules and leaving his neck unprotected, and he succeeded. The she-wolf didn't resist occasionally regaining consciousness and growling. Then the man lifted the she-wolf onto his shoulder and dragged her to his cabin. It was only a few hundred meters away, but it still took almost twenty minutes to carry the quite heavy predator through the snow. He placed the she-wolf next to the stove to warm her up. While the cabin was heating up, the forester was able to examine the animal's wounds which he then cleaned and treated as best he could with his first aid kit. John had received training in providing medical assistance during his military service, so he knew what to do. If he had waited any longer, the animal would have simply bled out. The predator gradually began showing signs of life. When she growled at him again, he understood that everything would be fine. She needed time to recover but knowing that she would soon regain her strength, John decided to take her out of the house onto the porch when she was unconscious again. He laid down a warm blanket there and placed a bowl of water, and then he brought out the rescued animal. After taking care of the she-wolf, John set out to find her pups. The pups shouldn't be far because the she-wolf usually doesn't leave them alone. 
As expected, thanks to his experience in reconnaissance and work in the forest, he knew the habits of the animals. First, he returned to the spot where he found the she-wolf and carefully examined the snow around, and finally he found what he was looking for. Small tracks. It was likely the very wolf cub that got scared during their first encounter and ran away. After briefly following the tracks, the forester arrived at the desired location. It was a hidden spot at first glance. Hoping it was the den with the wolf pups, he gathered his determination and tried to attract them. However, the pups had been trained to stay inside until they heard their mother. John was persistent and did everything he could, even attempting to mimic a wolf howl, but nothing happened. Thoughts arose that he could crawl into the den himself when suddenly a little wolf cub jumped out from there. The little creature was hungry and willing to take the risk of leaving the shelter without its mother. When the first brave pup emerged, the others soon followed. Knowing he couldn't carry all four of them, he carefully placed them in a bag and closed it. John needed to check if there were any more pups in the den. Sticking his head into a wolf's den wasn't a good idea, but the thought of leaving one behind was unacceptable. Knowing he couldn't carry all four of them, he carefully placed them in a bag and closed it. John needed to check if there were any more pups in the den. Sticking his head into a wolf's den wasn't a good idea, but the thought of leaving one behind was unacceptable. He lay on his stomach and crawled a bit inside. Fortunately, the den wasn't as deep as he had assumed. John shone his flashlight, but there were no other wolves in sight, and now he could leave with a clear conscience, knowing he had taken all the pups. He took the bag with the wolf pups and headed home. When John opened the door to the porch where the she-wolf slept, the pups whimpered, and he immediately placed the open bag on the floor, from which they jumped out like bullets. The mother heard the voices of her little ones and stood up on her paws. Her eyes were moist, as if she was crying at a reunion she no longer expected. There was no negative reaction towards the man, no growling or attempts to attack, but he still left the pups next to their mother and went back into his cabin, peeking at them through a crack in the door. John hoped his scent wouldn't repel the mother from them. The pups rushed to their mother. She sniffed them, and John held his breath for a moment. She recognized them. The experienced adventurer was brought to tears when she started licking the wolf pups. She lay down, and soon the little ones eagerly began nursing on her milk. The she-wolf spent some time with John, gradually improving each day. He would bring meat and change their water once a day, with the door to the outside left open. Eventually, the she-wolf was able to stand and walk, albeit with a limp. A few days later, in the morning, she softly called her children, and they all got up and followed her. John stepped outside and watched the departing family. The she-wolf walked about twenty meters and turned around. He understood everything from her eyes. It was boundless gratitude towards this man, but also caution towards humans in general, for it was humans who nearly killed the she-wolf and her pups. John never saw the pack of predators again, but he knew that four young wolves and the she-wolf were now somewhere out there, perhaps even remembering their savior. Despite his age and extensive experience with animals, he wanted to believe in that. This incident spread through many local newspapers in Canada, and John became somewhat of a hero in his town. He detailed this extraordinary story in the media, and occasionally he is asked to relive the tale once again at roundtable discussions. If this story touched you as deeply as it did us, please support it with a like and subscribe to the channel.